Hello guys, welcome back to another Psycraft episode. Today we're going to continue some work on the Creeper farm that was started a couple months ago. We are actually now in the final stages of finishing this project. Maybe let's have a yeah, flight around to check out the progress. So we actually covered the whole perimeter floor now with mostly black concrete and maybe if we fly up a little bit you can see a creeper face here. This is some decoration. We're gonna have a creeper face in the yeah, creeper perimeter. Alright, let's check out the farm. It's mostly built up. This was a lot of work. I think we started building on this two months ago. Over half a million blocks. It's almost finished. The only step left to do is removing the bottom obsidian here. And also the obsidian right there in order to prevent the some pigment spawning or yeah, blocking the mob cap. We'll do that with this contraption here. This is the update suppression uh, machine. So there's only a certain amount of block updates can happen at once. And we exceed that limit. Basically, we break the, obs uh, the obsidian. But yeah, there's a chain of rails that are getting updated, which happens before the obsidian actually sends block updates around it. And therefore, the block, the, the portal blocks don't get updated. All right. Um, yeah, I haven't been involved in building this up, so I am at the moment also not able to demonstrate this. Not sure how far we are. I just joined back the first time in survival since a couple of weeks. So the, yeah, I was at the Minecon in the United States, took some holiday as well. And then once I came back, I don't know, just wasn't in the mood for playing. So Minecraft played a lot of Seven Days to Die. But yeah, now I'm back playing survival and got a really important assignment. I'm placing black glass on top of the farm in order to prevent mob spawning. Right, got a few shulker boxes of black glass. Gonna do that and then after we're done here, I also got a smaller project for this episode. Alright, so the top of the creeper farm is now fully covered with glass. And meanwhile the Reich machine actually started to fill in the eye hole of the creeper here with black glass as well. There wasn't a plan initially. We kind of wanted to keep the area around the creeper farm um, yeah, without full spawn protection since it's not technically not necessary once you AFK in the middle of the farm here anyway then the outside area would be out of, yeah, outside of the uh, spawning range so it's not necessary but of a brief discussion we decided to do it anyway um, because it's kind of nicer if you fly around uh, to get not get any mob spawning Right, at the moment we don't get mob spawning anyway because the mob switch is running, of course. But yeah, eventually, might be necessary to have that as well. Alright, I think that's gonna be about half a million blocks to place again. It'll definitely take a while. Well, that didn't last very long. We immediately ran out of the black glass since we did not plan for this at all. So we have to get more. At the moment we actually don't have any black glass stored, not even normal glass. But we still have a couple million sand, so we just need to smelt some. So that's the perfect opportunity to use our good old 1.8 furnace array once again. This was built about four years ago. It's 320 furnaces. You can check it out if you get on those ladders. We have two halls. Um, we have 80 furnaces on each side. So the nice thing about this is that it has a nice interface. You can actually see all of the furnaces working. And yeah. I haven't used this in ages. I remember the last time I used this must have been, I don't know, once we had the old server. The server was actually lagging or not running at 20 TPS anymore. So as you can see, we have about 32 MSPT, so we're good in the, yeah, at 20 TPS. The server, uh, the furnace array running now. So it's pretty nice. All right, yeah. Freeze the Fox and Ech Machine are helping out. We actually had to refill this by hand, so we don't have any Schalker box systems for this. Everything needs to be put into those chests, and then we can take it out of those chests on the side. Kinda also remembers me that we definitely want to build a new furnace array at some point. Um, that is no longer as outdated as this one here. Um, one thing we also don't have for this furnace array would be chunk loading system, so we can just leave it running without being there, so we easily to spawn uh, a bot or load it ourselves while being there. Right, so we brought over about 200,000 sand, it should take about two hours to smelt. Alright, so for today's smaller project I want to finish something that we built up almost two years ago. 
Uh, a piston bolt connection to the ender pearl cannon. So we got one coming from the nether hub to the pearl cannon, but we don't have any connection back to the nether hub. Usually we would arrive here at this platform and then just fly to the nether hub. But yeah, I feel like it would be nice to have a piston bolt connection as well. And I actually have a plan to make a new type of piston bolt, which would be the fastest piston bolt ever. So while the normal piston bolt reaches 20 blocks per second, you basically get pushed forward um, every tick one block. The diagonal one reaches 28.2 meters per second because you kind of get pushed forward one block in that direction plus one block in that direction and they're that's about 1.4 blocks per tick, so 28 blocks per second. But I think we can even push this a little bit further, so we can maybe push diagonally and downwards as well, so then we could reach about 34 meters per second. I'll have to test it in the creative world first though. So this should work because usually the minecarts actually snap to the rails below them, so if I would push this one forward, it pushes to this one, and so on. So I'll just wire it up real quick and see if we power this with one ticker part if it still works. So let's try. Okay, so this is basically also a piston bolt where you can travel at 28.2 blocks per second. Now let's take it even one step further and try to do this diagonally. Let's see if rail curving might be an issue with a setup like this one here, but I'm quite sure it should work. I'm just gonna add the extra blocks here. Yep, there we go. Then we can build our piston bolt. Now, we just need pistons on both sides again, I would assume, for the diagonal one. Let's try this. Alright, so we would want a piston. Let's actually put a minecart down. That pushes it from here. There, I would assume. And the same thing down there. Maybe let's try that. Because both need to be powered at the same time. Okay, this works. I wonder if it would work with one piston. No, it's good. it just gets pushed to the side, of course. Alright, um, yeah. And as always, we can power this pair of pistons at the same time. So, not sure how the wiring would look like. Maybe we can power this block and put a redstone dust here. They would power both of them and then we need the same couple blocks over again. So we can power this block maybe. Oh, this is getting tricky. <laughs> no, wait. Um... The redstone dust here, and just need, yeah, repeater here, but then you would redirect the redstone dust. Isn't that easy? I'll try to come up with something. All right, that might be working here. Let's actually also get into minecart and launch it ourselves if we can. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so this is a working piston bolt. Nice, okay. Then I think we yeah, figured out all the technical issues with this one here. Now, maybe you can try to make it look nice as well. We built up this Christmas themed workshop around the Ender Pearl Ken about two years ago, because it was around Christmas time. And yeah, I'm afraid that it would actually ruin the look now by adding stuff to it. Um, not entirely sure how it's gonna go. Right, so here, really hidden, we got the platform. It's not right above the building, it's a bit offset. I was thinking maybe we can build another one of those towers that we have here on the side. Or a giant candy cane in order to kind of connect it to the ground so we don't have it free floating anymore. Um, yeah, I kind of like the look of this tower here. Maybe we'll try to do something similar there and just have a little platform above. So the tower is taking shape, I'm not quite sure if it's an eyesore already, but I think I'll continue. So that's the final height of the tower. I would like to add a spire like those here on top of it as well, but we have to be careful here so we don't block the ender pearl. So the ender pearl is coming from 
approximately that direction and collides with this block here and that ends your journey. <laughs> All right, um, one thing we need to do as well, I actually haven't really thought about this, but it just came to my mind is that we have to hook up um, yeah, the minecart storage. So right now we got minecart stored at the nether hub, so you travel all yeah, this way. Uh, you get ejected out of the minecart automatically here. And then the minecart is currently just sent over this uh, rail line, gets broken by the cactus here and is put into a chest. That of course is overflowing because we've been using it for two years and never bothered to empty the chest here. So we would need to hook this up to the top of the tower as well, the new one. Uh, so basically we get a closed loop of the minecarts, so we don't have to craft new ones all the time. Right, I think we can fit a dropper elevator into this tower, so that's quite nice. So I was thinking maybe we put the top dropper, or in this case actually the dispenser, right here at this block. Then a curved rail on top, piston here and there, and maybe here the activation uh, button. And you would place down the second curved rail, and then you... Yeah, go down towards that direction. I think you would actually reach the ground around the middle area. I'm not sure if I want this or if you maybe should maybe change it a little bit. We could maybe go down block every second block. That's something you can consider. Maybe let's go <laughs> back to creative and try this real quick. So this is certainly working. With two rails the same height, diagonally. Makes it a bit easier to power everything, but of course it's no longer the fastest piston bolt as the title implies. Um, but I think actually a combination of this version here and then transition to a normal diagonal piston bolt would be just as fast as if we would build almost the whole section in this style. Kind of like this one a bit more to be honest. Uh, yeah, as I said, in total for this section it would wouldn't matter at all. I think I'm just gonna build this one instead. I like it a bit more. Time rest right there, splitting this up on stream. Piston wall is now functional. Actually, also quite fun to ride. It feels a little bit like going down a slide here. And the transitions also work. So, from downward diagonal to normal diagonal and straight. And now we're at the nether up. Okay, I still need to break the minecart somehow. Um, I think I'm just gonna build up something similar like we did over here. Just go up a block. Break the micro of the cactus and attach a hopper line to the suspensor here. That should be enough. Alright, now let's work on the dropper tower. I already hooked up the hoppers to it, so we got some micro in there. And yeah, now we also need to power it. I'm thinking about just sending a signal down and store all the micro here in the lowest dropper and the hoppers in the back, and then send just exactly one up and place it again. Right, now I just need to power this. Um, 
I think in moment 12 we need to worry about directionality of dropper towers. Let's quickly go to the creative world again. Alright, so here's the problem with the dropper elevators in 1.12. So this design here works in the north-south direction. As you can see there's not a single item in there. If I put an item in the bottom dropper and activate this tower, then I don't get sent through properly. Just got dispensed, couldn't see it. Let's do it again. The button here. There we go. Right, same setup, just in the east west direction now. No items in there. And it gets stuck. So there I need to do something differently. If I remember right, you just had to add more observers like this. Then it would be sent through properly. Let's try this. Yeah, okay, that's what you gotta do in east west. Um, by the way, this yeah, kind of only applies to 1.12. In 114, what you would do instead is just use node blocks instead of blocks. And then if you use this setup here, this would work in all directions. Yeah, also vice versa in 112, if we would build this setup now um, in the north-south direction, it also doesn't work. So I always have to yeah, remember <laughs> which uh, version works in which direction, which I also always fail to do, so I have to test this myself. So one little correction, in case you want to take this advice, in the east-west direction, you actually need an observer here every block. Otherwise, it wouldn't be reliable. But this way, all the items are getting sent through. Okay. Also made this mistake in survival, so that's why I had to come back to the creative world. The dropper tower should be functional now. Let's check it out. Let's send a minecart. Should take a couple of seconds. There's a lot of servers and signals to travel through. But we should get a new minecart any moment. There we go. And also this piston got triggered. It's just not a problem at all. Alright. Let's actually ride it. Minecarts are getting stuck here. Somebody can't get around the corner. Okay, that's interesting. Maybe we need to move this block here. Yeah, that's all stood. All right. Yeah. One last thing I want to do. I actually want to test out the pearl cannon again. So none of the blocks we placed is obstructing. Uh, the ender pearl now. We should still arrive at the same spot. So this is the pearl can at the mesa biome. Let's see if we arrive at the correct spot again. There we go. And we can conveniently get into the minecart. Yeah. It's pretty good. Alright, so this is one project finished after about a three year delay. Finally, another finished project. Um, the next thing we want to check on is quickly how much glass we have now. So we have about 90,000 and another maybe 70,000, 160,000 glass now. Unfortunately, not nearly enough. So we have to feed this um, furnace ray again. In the meantime, we also ran out of charcoal, so we had yeah, the tree farm was running again to feed it. Um, kind of really want to build a new furnace array at some point, but that's maybe a project for another episode. Yeah, that's it for today. Thanks guys for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.